obviously you're quite about um, promoting masculinity and looking for positives about masculinity. Yeah. What extent do you think that it's important for men to understand the feminine aspects of themselves? Yep. Very. And uh, and of the women that they're with, uh, Very. or that kind of thing. So. So how do you feel that femininity plays into being a modern man? So for, for me, and the reason I bang on about positive masculinity is for me, it's the foundation for men, right? Or most men. That, I agree with you totally. It's on a spectrum, right? And all of us are on there somewhere. It's masculine at one end, feminine at another end. And, you know, you could say that's gender, but it's also the same for energy, right? We're all on the spectrum somewhere. Most men are more at the masculine end of that spectrum. Most women are more at the feminine end of that spectrum. And there's a whole lot of bits in, in the middle. But if I my role, is the way that I see it, is to talk to the men that are more at the masculine end of that spectrum, right? And helping them to connect with that part of themselves in a positive way, right? Because for me, that's foundational. That is who we are. And I think when I first started on this journey and I started talking to men about masculinity, well, actually, what I mainly got was a really negative response and a shameful response and people trying to move away from that part of who they are, right? And I found that really heartbreaking. At the same time, I would say femininity to them and they thought had nothing but positive things to say about that. Likewise, when I spoke to women, you'd say femininity, a lot of women would eschew that. They would go, oh, it's all pink and fluffy, it's weak, it's da 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 right? Not really understanding the power and the beauty and the, 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 like, the vibrancy of what feminine actually is right and likewise then you would but you'd say to the masculine and they go oh yeah that's good that's a bit that gets stuff done that's powerful that's all this that and the other they would see that masculine so we've got people viewing a second the secondary layer of who they are in a positive way but the fundamental layer of who they are in a negative way and and i think if what we're trying to achieve is this ascendance right into that we're all the same you can't just jump there right there has to be acceptance of all of the different parts of you in the same way that we were talking about at the beginning about acceptance of the, the shadow aspects of who we are right we've got to have a full acceptance for all of the parts and for me if you're a, a man who's mostly masculine right you've got to learn how to love that bit and see that part of you in a really positive light and see how it can contribute to society in a positive way and how it can be beautiful and how it can be loving and how it can be um how you can use it to care for all of the people around you Right now, once we've done that and the men who have worked with me over a period of time, they will all know. But I don't preach about that too much. I don't talk about it because that is level one. You can't skip to level two. But level two is absolutely connecting with your own sense of femininity and your own element and how how we can step into that in a conscious way. Because what I see is that men in their femininity in an unconscious way, don't do it particularly healthily, right? And actually, you look at, I mean, I'd watched RuPaul's Drag Race for the first time the other day, and I found it really uncomfortable, right? I just did, because it was a, it was almost like blackface for women, right? It was like men giving a, this really bizarre representation of what, what women are, right? And a lot of it is the most toxic elements of femininity, calling themselves a bitch, being really catty and all of this. And I thought it was a pretty good example. I'm not slating drag by any sense of the imagination, but it was a real good representation of, of that, of, of men doing this demonstration of femininity and what they think it is, right? And, and buying into all of the negative parts of it. And I thought it was quite, I feel from what I saw, I don't have a full understanding of it, but it felt very negative towards femininity and very negative towards women to me. That's how it felt when I watched it. And so actually when men are doing their feminine energy, what they actually, what they usually do is the shadow element of femininity or the toxic version, I don't like that phrase, but the toxic version of, of, of femininity and it can often be quite, quite bitchy and quite catty and all of this sort of stuff. Likewise, when women do masculinity unconsciously, they do the negative aspects, the shadow elements of masculinity, and they can be quite bullying, quite domineering, quite um, violent, um, and, and things in, a, in an unhealthy way. So actually, when we do these parts in a conscious way, and in a healthy way, it's a beautiful thing, you know? And I think guys do need to 
learn to step into that nurturing part of who they are. Men do need to learn how to sit and just be. Men do need to learn how to receive and not just give, right? And, and But we need to be able to do that in a conscious way. Someone said to me a phrase that worked really well, when men don't know how to receive, they take, right? And I thought, oh, that really sums that part up for me, actually, that receiving is a, is an essential part of feminine energy right it's learning how learning how to receive and it can come right down to sex right men give men penetrate women receive right and in that same dynamic that men and women have often think that men is the provider women is the recipient but women create and build and 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 uh, and provide the, the love and the care within the frame that's provided for by the masculine right and whether that's an internal process of, of the human being both elements to themselves or it's part of a relationship between a masculine person and a feminine person. So I think it's really important for men to go through a healthy examination of their feminine element and learn how to do it in a conscious and healthy way. And likewise, I think it's the same for, for women. And I think that's what creates a, a well-rounded and balanced person. There is balance. And I think it's really unhealthy. I see a lot of people in my sphere who talk about polarity and they talk about it in such rigid terms. It's, it's just wrong like humans aren't rigid man <laughs> humans are flexible and they're flowing and and they are in the moment and we're also capable right of of being of bringing different elements of who we are to specific situations and the more consciousness we bring to that and our ability to do that the better cool um it's funny but one of the things you were saying there about um understanding like the the all the aspects of masculinity and how to you know manage them and all the rest of it is it's something it just made me think of something that Jordan Peterson actually said so mm. I was quoting positively for hey. once. but um, but he was saying that like saying you're a non-violent person is meaningless if you're not a violent person so <laughs> if you understand that your violence is within you and that you're capable yeah, of violence I, and yeah. you're capable of these things and that you actively choose to use it appropriately yes. or not use it at all even in some in a lot of situations but if you choose to do that that's an act of strength is to say i am violent but i choose not to be negatively correct violent. i you think know. i think jordan peterson really expresses violence and combat training and capacity for violence in, in a really good way actually I've got, I've got a lot of time for the way that he does explain that and the usefulness of it and even that old phrase of i'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a gardener in a war and actually <laughs> so society does need strong men with capacity for violence and most of the guys that i know that are trained in violence are the least violent people i know right? They're the calmest, they're the loveliest. Some of them are the love, not all of them, right? There are some nut jobs as well. <laughs> but mostly the guys that have real capacity to do harm at a serious level with violence are the least likely to use it. But they're the guys that I want to be with every single time. Do you know what I mean? I'm in case, right? And and because there's always going to, we're never going to eradicate rogue people in the world we're never going to eradicate that we're just not i mean we can sit there and be wishful but we are animals and we are humans and there is always going to be bad people that need restraining using violence right that need to be stopped and at some point that physical element is always the the benchmark and i think far it's far more dangerous now that we have weapons that can do it for us like we're in a much worse place now i mean i went to vegas and we went to a shooting range which was great fun it felt like a very masculine experience. We all went. It was a load of us boxers, weirdly enough, uh, for my mate who's a boxer. We went for his wedding. And we were all in the minibus coming back and we were explaining to this guy that we all fight, right? And this dude, the dude was just like, nah, man, why do I want to learn how to box for? Like, I've just got a gun. I walk around everywhere with a forty-five on my hip. If you hit me, I'll shoot you. And for me, that, but that laziness, right? Like just none of what it takes, like all of that spiritual positive stuff that it takes to become a combat athlete, like or a, a proponent of self-defense, all of the spiritual and mental stuff that you have to go through to become skilled, right? At that, you miss all of that by just going, I've got a gun. And it's like, yeah, and a Big Mac is food, right? Um, right, okay, so relationships. 
what's the secret to a happy relationship? Ha. So that's a good question, right? That is a good question. That's the, well, what, what, that's what's, the one. what's the secret sauce for a good relationship? Yeah. Again, I'm going to, I have to speak in generalizations and people don't yeah. like that, but I think it's important to speak to the masses, right? And I think the vast majority, like I said, of men are on the masculine spectrum of that thing. And women at the, fem the feminine end of that spectrum. And there are people in between and um, consciousness is, is the key to it. People often talk about communication as well oh, communication but they never actually sort of sum up what some of those important elements of communication are and i do think this kind of really understanding the difference between men and women or masculine and feminine beings and the way that we communicate and the way that we see the world is is really important and i think actually having that that balance and when we do swap over, this is the point that people argue against. It's like, well, d people think that by talking about polarity and men being in the masculine element and women being in the feminine element of, of that, that it has to stay like that all the time. And it's like, well, you know, if I'm on my way out and I can take the bins, of course you can, right? I think when I talk about masculinity in relationships, I talk about leadership, right? And that men, the masculine person should take the responsibility and lead, the leadership role for the relationship overall, right? Which is at complete odds to what's going on at the moment. I think women tend to, like the whole market is aimed at women. So all of the books and the TV shows and the movies and everything else like that around relationships, right? The whole relationship industry is aimed at women, right? And so therefore we think they know more about relationships and therefore are more qualified to be the designer and in the lead role of a relationship and actually it's not because leading a relationship requires testosterone right it's responsibility it carries weight to have that responsibility and men are actually designed better to do that and so having that thought process of creating a longer term vision for it and plotting the goals and how we're going to get there and inviting a feminine person, inviting a woman along to be part of that and to, to fill up that container and create the beauty and the light and the fun and the joy along that journey. That's the bit that works really, really well in the most part. And I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of guys now to do that and women as well. And when that's done in a really conscious and healthy and loving way, right it just makes relationships a whole lot better for sure i do work with women occasionally but i think there's a real like i don't work with lots of women i turn down women and pass them on to my partner and my other colleagues a lot more often than i than i say yes to working with women but i think there's a real value a lot of women haven't experienced what it's like to work with a healthy male and be held in that container in order to heal the wounds that have been afflicted on them by unhealthy men, right? And so I think there's real value in that place, I think. And likewise, there's some, some value, I think less so, um, for men working with women to heal that mother wounds. I actually think men need to work with, with men as well first. That might make it sound like I think that men should be the only therapists and healers out there, and it, it's not. Absolutely, there's a space for women working with, with women and really understanding how to connect and step into that femininity. Um, and, and there's only some things that like other women can understand. There's stuff we will never, as men, know what it's like to be in a female body, right? We just won't and what it's like with all of the hormones and everything else like that and the cycles and all of that. We just have no concept of what that's like and vice versa, right? But men doing men's work is a really powerful thing and on occasion there is something to be said for women working with a healthy male in a that that is trusting and knows how to consciously hold hold a masculine container for women to heal that part the, the wounds and the damage that kind of can be done because a lot of women just haven't experienced it you know they've had an unhealthy experience with their partner um with their dad with their partners 
you know, just a long one with, with, with men at work, they would have just had a, a string of bad interactions with men that has just created a, a, a wound and a mistrust um, with, with men. And that's a real problem in society, for sure, because those women might go on to have sons and they unconsciously pass that stuff down. So I work especially a lot, quite often, with mothers of sons who, have, who are carrying wounds from men in their past and I help them heal that bit. So yeah, I do work with women as well, but it's quite a specific bit of work that I do. One of the um, epidemics, if you like, for men at the moment is suicide. Yeah. Um, and there are a lot of people who constantly struggle with it and well, we both know people who've yep. not successfully overcome it. Um, what do you think is driving that so much more in men than it is in women? Ooh, I have probably a bit of a controversial position on male suicide. I think mainly the main reason why male suicide is so much higher than women's is because we're better at it. We're just better at it and we have access to the equipment and other skills necessary to be able to complete the task all the way. That's a massive element. We, we, men and women suffer from mental health stuff to the same levels, right? The stats really, really show that. Um, but I think men have a higher propensity towards violence and have also the, the thought process. Part of that masculinity that I was talking about, which is that being a provider and thinking more long-term and stuff like that about family, and men are much more likely to go, actually, these people would be better off without me. Therefore, simple solution, take myself out of the equation. Right? That's a very right-brained, logical thought process. Right? And then they go and take the action to do that. Whereas women and their bond with their children, that nurturer aspect, actually, that feminine element is actually, I might feel really shit within myself, but actually I need to stay alive because these people need me to look after them. Right? And so I think women's strength for that. And even if you look at the methods that are used, women take pills, do things in baths, drown themselves, stuff like that, that are much more likely to be safe from or survive. Um, men chuck themselves off high buildings yeah this is a depressing subject but men use weapons use guns use contraptions in their cars you know they use methods that work because they've got more contact with all of that sort of stuff and understand the ability and that's genuinely what i think it is that's one of the big elements as to why there's such a disparity in the numbers why, why do you think men get this attitude of, well, they'd be better off without me. Because I, I've talked to a few partners of people who've committed suicide. Not one of them has ever turned around and said, oh, that's so much easier now he's gone. Now he's gone. Of course not. Why do you think men take that attitude as opposed to women who take more of a, but I couldn't do this to my family, I couldn't do this to my kids, I couldn't do this to my partner, you know? Because we are programmed and we're taught that our use to our family is as a provider right and um there's still that whole thing of like uh, there's only like only women and children they're unconditionally loved right men are not unconditionally loved there's a lot of talk about that in the red pill world and everything else like that and i see where they've come to that conclusion right because our value as men is what we bring to the table what we can provide and I think for a lot of guys who feel like they can't provide that therefore there is no value to that that conversation isn't had in the same way with women right it's not so tangible because what do they provide they provide love right they provide a nurturing space and all of this that never and, and so it's 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 less tangible and they're never going to not bring that to the table does that make sense whereas the guys can quite men can quite easily think well I've lost my job Right, I'm just a no good piece of shit because I can't hold down a job. I can't provide. I've lost all of the money. And how many times that's the reason, right? Men commit suicide largely about financial aspects, right? And the mental the deterioration of their mental health that takes them there afterwards. But quite often financial issues are a massive driver for that. And just generally a feeling of letting their family down, right? Of not being the man their capacity to do that if they think their capacity to do that has, has been damaged then they'll feel like it's pretty a waste of time for them being there awful no, it's, no i appreciate it. it's, a, it's a difficult one to discuss mm. um 
I just I just think it is yeah it's 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 kind of hard to put a nail in what, yeah what look, is it those are very sim- those are so, simple yeah. answers to obviously yeah, a very complex yeah. and again we, we will look at individuals and there'll all be a little mix of all of that of all of that stuff but absolutely at the moment the sort of the drivers for getting there are guys not feeling like they are able to <clears throat> to bring the masculine value to so their family what, community one of, one of the things that, that um like people like jp and whoever and red pill and so on they they do bring up this idea that men are less valued in society this is what i was saying you know, men aren't so unconditionally loved. do you think it, that's a hang-up of a previous time or it's a misconception by men or do you think that men are legitimately less considered less valuable more expendable <sighs> more expendable is different to less valuable so actually one of the problems in society is how we don't value healthy feminine prospects. I did some research. I went down a rabbit hole of Iceland, right? Highest, high, happiest country in the world, right? And has the biggest gender equality in the world, right? But still has quite high suicide rates, by the way. Mm-hmm. One of the things was that given their gender equality levels, right, and their happiness, then you look at actually what women are doing with this equality and it was something crazy like 78 percent of women are still in two or three sectors right and that's healthcare education and social services so women even given all of the opportunity to be anything that they want are largely operating in those nurturing roles right in those nurturing parts of society and one of the things we don't do in this country and certainly in the western world we totally devalue that nurses get paid bugger all, teachers get paid bugger all, social services and carers get paid bugger all. We show value it in a capitalist society is shown with money, right? So we value that those feminine things. It used to be like, what is a more important, what are more important roles in a healthy society than the people that keep us alive and stop us from being sick, the people that educate the next generation and the people that care for us and keep us all safe right like really they should be getting paid all the monies anyway so actually capitalism values femininity low right masculinity particularly the toxic side of it right or the shadow element of it is valued quite highly who's the person that makes the most money in the world the guy that produces the guy who owns louis vuitton like literally destroying the planet Right, destroying the planet in whatever way possible, making the most useless products in the world. Right, <laughs> handbags and luxury goods is the richest person in the world, followed by Amazon dude. Right, he's only not he's only been knocked off space because he gave half of it to his ex missus. Right, but the guy who makes all of the plastic widgets and just dis- again destroying the planet, not very useful, not very helpful, providing all of the crap. Right, so in some ways, we value masculinity higher than we value femininity however men as individuals historically and even still now aren't valued as much we are seen as expendable that is the that is the the downside of being the protector right of being the leader as you put your head above the parapet right we walk on the roadside of the pavement we pay the bills right all of that and in order to do that we will go and do bomb disposal we will be fishermen we will be firemen right we will be police officers we'll do all of the dangerous jobs ridiculously filled by men right again there's red pillars will go oh they want equality but none of them will go and empty the bins right you can't argue with that debate it's not really it's not really that simplistic but yeah men are fill all of the dangerous jobs in the world right in, without, without us they, they wouldn't I've, get done i've worked with uh lbf like london fire brigade uh, mm-hmm. doing not not doing interviews just to do with like stuff but we were working with a lot of them and there yep. was quite a healthy mix i mean there is now there is there majority is now. men but there's quite a lot of women but what was interesting was i was talking to one of the women who was a firefighter yeah. And one thing is they have to be called firefighters now. Yes. Fireman's not a good term. <laughs> because they do well the same that, job, they do the same pay. But what was interesting talking to her was that like, there's an automatic tendency of people to say, 
well, if I'm in a fight, I want a guy to come in and lift me out of the building. Mm-hmm. And like the other thing to me was like, everywhere from about here upwards is smoke. So if I put you on my shoulders, you're dead. You know, <laughs> that's it, you're dead. You want to be dragged out of a building. You do not want to be carried out of a building. Yeah. And so, so women can do that. Secondly, most fire, like buildings on fire or collapsed buildings or buildings in trouble, you've got to get through. And if you're really big, it's harder to get through that building. <laughs> But the main one that I found interesting was that she said that men have a tendency, and it's not like all men, especially not with training and everything else, but men have a tendency of turning up on scene and going, lay it in there and Yeah, the this is what I was going to say. And women have a tendency of going, Just Stop and on. think and come at it from a more pragma- pragmatic approach, of course. Mm. But again, when we, the reason why we say stuff like that is we actually, we want the action taker, right? We think we do. Because we talk, this is an emotional conversation, right? Our life is at risk. We want the we want the guy who's just going to run in, be able to boot the door down, pick us up, and run us run us away. And look, I used to be a stripper. This is something that we haven't talked about so far. But I was a stripper for three and a half years, and we did a lot of market research into what uniforms people wanted us to wear. Like, what are the sexiest uniforms for women? Fireman was like, you can't like so far ahead of any other uniform obviously totally ridiculous to put on as a stripper we tried to figure it out and it just didn't work so we had army outfits and we had the officer and the gentleman was the most popular but army outfits cowboy outfits um all of those sort of things but this like women in general still want that 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 archetype right the calendars and stuff like that of the firemen um, and things and that's all it's imagery right it's emotional it's not logical process what we'd, we'd this is a, an emotional conversation for everybody concerned. But do you think possibly there's an element of self-fulfilling prophecy in that the kind of women yes. who go and see strippers are the kind of women who are going to see strippers in those masculine type of thing? You know, like, like the kind of woman who's maybe not necessarily attracted to that isn't going to go strippers anyway. Possibly. So I don't know. I, I'm not like po- you know, po- pos- pushing down your extensive research. Po- possibly. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. But I think, you know, that, that was my actual one but i think there's still quite a lot of truth in the fact that women generally want that physical element i mean it comes down to men women want guys who are under six foot tall for instance mm. doing much worse on dating apps than everybody else like there's a physical element and there's a reason for that that, that women mm. continually pick tall men and well, it's not just because they're tall it's because that feeling of safety and feeling of protection oh, yeah. whether it's real or not i know like most of the dangerous guys i know are under six foot <laughs> like do you know what I mean I was having this conversation with my jiu jitsu yeah. instructor the other day he's a little fella right he absolutely he'd kill me with his bare hands do you know what I mean um, so that it, this isn't about logic unfortunately no. for you John no, <laughs> no, well, no I, the thing is it's I, an emotive I, it's I, a, these I, are I, emotive I, choices like, I or primal I don't have choices I have confidence in myself I don't feel like I'm ugly or whatever else or unattractive yeah. but I would say that almost always the feature that women who ever compliment me on always compliment me on height. On your height. Nice like and tall. I've got a choice in them. Tall man. I know. You know? Oh, wait, even I'm your face. Four. I get that. But, but yeah. it's always like, it's always about the height. It's always yep. about being tall. Yep. Yeah. So again, like it's not even an emotional conversation. I'm wrong. It's a primal conversation. Mm. This isn't about even emotion or thought or logic. It's none of it. It's a primal conversation. 